he got to talking about one of my buddies in California, Brother Carriker knows Brother Dominguez. Remember Brother Dominguez, Brother Carriker? Missionary to Belgium or to Portugal. There he's got come through here years ago preaching for us. Old Brother Dominguez and I, we've been friends for years. And uh, he come to the pulpit and opened up the Bible. He said, turn the book open to Brother John. Praise God. Brother Dominguez, God only knows how many souls he's won to God. Hallelujah. How many of you won? How many do you want to win? Praise God. You know something, Brother Tracy, for your own benefit, son, I, I wept for you yesterday afternoon. I said, Brother Tracy needs this sermon real bad. You need to hear the sermon Brother Bo preached yesterday. Just worry Brother Charles to death till you get it. Praise God. Brother Charles recorded that sermon. <clears throat> and uh, Brother Bo preached a sermon a lot of you need to hear knowing the will of God in your life. I wonder how many of you need to know the will of God in your life. Boy, it's powerful. We wept, we cried, we done everything. Hallelujah. I'm going to read tonight from the book of St. John, the 12th chapter. Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I'm not going to preach on it tonight. I rather doubt 20% of people who ever go to church ever finds out what this verse means. I doubt whether 20% of the people who go to an apostolic church ever in their lifetime in church will find out what this verse means. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I into this hour. Father, glorify thy name. This is a sermon I'm going to preach tonight. And then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. I want to preach tonight. What did you see? What did you hear? Praise God. Praise God. Lord Jesus, tonight, I'm asking you, God, to minister in this house tonight. I'm asking you, God, to talk to everybody that's in this house tonight. I'm asking you, God, to preach to each and every one of us that's here tonight. Somehow, God, anoint these lips of clay tonight, that they might speak the oracles of God tonight. They might cause us, Lord, to find you in your power and in your glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, praise God. You may be seated. I want to preach to you tonight on what did you hear? What did you see? It is but a few short moments before... This verse is recorded in the scriptures. 
that Jesus performs to us earthly beings one of his most magnificent miracles while he was on the face of the earth. Our problem with God is, is we don't understand that there's nothing too hard for God. We make it hard, and we make it impossible, but with God, nothing's hard, and with God, nothing is impossible. It is inconceivable to me to understand that that God could speak to the elements of whatever they may be. Call it gases. Call it whatever you want to call it. And from that voidness would come waters. And God would speak to the waters. And from that waters would come land divided out of it. And God would speak to that land and apple trees would pop up out of the ground full of apples like mushrooms. Orange trees, banana trees, coconut trees. Every kind of tree we know about jump up out of the ground with fruit on it, nut trees, berries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, just jump out of the ground and cover the ground. My God, no wonder it was the Garden of Eden. No wonder it was a glorious place to be. Never had to go to the grocery store. Amen chicken laying its egg and the duck laying its egg and whatever else. God spoke it into existence. Praise God. Some of you have never heard me preach on the types of flesh that God made. You'd ever hear me preach on the types of flesh that God made, you'd know there's no such thing as evolution. Because one flesh does not evolve into another flesh. Praise God. Praise God. When I get to thinking of the awesomeness of God and, and the power of God, it, uh, there, there is nothing that is uh, too hard for God. There is nothing that is outside of the limits of the bonds of God that God can't do. In any time you ever read in the Bible, you'll find that when God performed a miracle... He looked at the person who thought that was such a marvelous thing and said, I can exceed that. But to us, earthlings tonight, it is most probable that most of us consider the fact that Jesus bringing Lazarus out of the tomb after he had been dead for three days is probably the most remarkable miracle that Jesus ever performed. It was this miracle that he performed that made the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and the Sadducees wilt like lettuce. It was this miracle that made them to understand he was God because nothing but God could do something like this. And we had to kill him or else he'll take our positions. And it was that that caused him to come to this statement that for such an hour I came into this world. Praise God. Praise God. And they had determined already, Jesus knew by this miracle, that this determinate counsel of which... Apostle Peter preached about in the second chapter of Acts would be them that would destroy him and kill him. Praise God. And God wanting to reach the people. I wonder how many of you tonight believe God wants to reach 
you, the people. Won't be long, girls, and I'm going to get in on the conversation. You two talked almost nonstop through church. Praise God. God wants to reach us. How many of you believe God wants to reach us? And so, while all of these people are here, there's a voice speaks out of heaven. Hallelujah. I said there's a voice that speaks out of heaven. You know what the record was? The record was this. Some people said they heard thunder. And some other people said they heard the voice of angels. I want to ask you, what did you see? And what do you hear? There are folks that's come to church tonight. And they ain't hardly seen anything yet except a whole lot of stuff that wouldn't even be worth talking about. Woo! I'm going to try to before I get through. Fact is, I, I'm just trying my best right now to tippy toe through the lily pad. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I, I know that there is a low road. And I know there is a high road. I heard a Baptist preacher preaching this afternoon on the radio and I thought, boy, he's doing a pretty good job for a Baptist. I finally did hear him, though, admit what the Baptist was going to do. Now I know what they're going to do. He said, we're going to be witnesses to the rapture. And I thought, yeah, and that's all you're going to be. Praise God. But you are going to be able to run around and tell folks it did happen. But I don't intend to be one of those on the low road. Amen. I don't intend to be a witness to the rapture. I intend to be in the rapture. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. And there's some folk that walk on the high road. They hear what the voice said. It didn't sound like mumble jumble to them. I asked the girls the other night, I said, did it, did it thunder? They said, no, Dad, it didn't thunder. That was you snoring. <laughs> I knew I heard a rumbling. I ain't never heard myself snore, so it must be a rumbling. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thunder just sounds like something bumping along. Isn't it amazing that some folks thought it sounded like that? And other folks thought it sounded like angels talking. There must be a lot of difference between what road you're on tonight to know the difference in the sound of it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, there was a couple of fellas walking down the road one day. They was on the low road. They crucified Jesus, and he was gone. And they had so much hope in this man that he could just heal lepers. And he could cause the blind to see. He could even, I wish I could do that. He could even get money out of fish mouth and pay his taxes. I never found a fish big enough to get taxes out of. Praise God. And here he's gone, and these two guys are walking down the low road. And they're talking about discouraging things and sad things that's happened to them when all of a sudden a third one starts walking along with them. And they're not even hardly paying attention that they're changing from the low road to the high road. And all of a sudden while they're talking, and he's talking with them, their hearts begin to burn inside of them. I'm going to tell you there's something about walking on the king's highway that makes your heart leap up inside of you. Praise God. That starts making your soul feast on things above. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm going to tell you something tonight, first, uh, folks. I want to ask you something. Since you come to church, what have you seen? What have you heard? Woo! What are you seeing since you come here tonight? What have you heard since you came here tonight? Some of you ain't seen nothing worth talking about. You walk out of here and leave tonight, and go to tell somebody what you've seen tonight, it wouldn't even be worth telling somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, it makes a lot of difference. The Holy Ghost is falling down in Acts, the second chapter. People are getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. People are getting full of the Holy Ghost. People are getting changed with the Holy Ghost. But you got to understand that there's thousands of people there. Some of us get that little silly idea. There's 120 of them there. But I'm here to tell you, there was thousands of them there. There was 120 or about in the upper room. Amen. But that upper room I've been there is in a courtyard big enough for 10,000 people to be there. They draw a little picture of the upper room to you folks and it don't even look nothing like the upper room. The upper room looks more like the, the what do you call it, the rotunda on the state house. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a big building under that upper room. Humongous building under that, isn't there, Sister Elder? We went upstairs and around and around, upstairs and around and around this big old building to get in to this big old upper room. Somebody said, well, how could it get 120 in there? I'll tell you what, it'll hold more than what you can get in here. Praise God. So they didn't have no trouble getting 120 in there. Hallelujah. Probably could get 400 in there pretty easy. Praise God. I, I'm here to tell you it's not how many you could get in there, but it's what was going on in there. And it's what was going on so much that folk downstairs begin to inquire on what's going upstairs. You know, some things can just make you inquire. I stayed in a motel Friday night. I ain't staying in that motel no more. 
about 2.15 in the morning, some woman called me and wanted me to do something. I was so sleepy, I don't know what she wanted. I can't remember, and I'm probably better off. Praise God. Truck drivers up above us. I don't know if they had some up gal up there trying to teach him how to dance or what, but they were sure making plenty of racket up there. Amen. Trucks running all night long. I said, I ain't never staying here no more. Praise God. Amen. There's some things could go on that make you inquire what's going on. Yeah, you let the fire trucks pull up beside this church right now. We know there ain't nothing wrong in here, but a lot of folks be running out there to see what's wrong. Hello. And the Holy Ghost started falling down in the upper room. Whew. Swept in there like a mighty wind. And people began to... And the Bible said in the 33rd verse that it was so much that they could see it and they could hear it. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost begins to fall down in a place, you can see what's going on, and you can hear what's going on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what you come to church for tonight, but I come to church to have church. I love everybody that's here, but i got to confess, I didn't come to see you tonight. I come to have church tonight. <laughs> what are you seeing since you've been here? Well, I don't know. It uh, sounds like a rumbling to me. Sounds about like thunder. I've seen kids talking since I've been in church. I've seen... One sister get up and run in and out since I've been to church. I've seen somebody fall asleep in church. I've seen... Could keep going, couldn't I? Boy, if you sit up here, you really see a lot of things. Sometimes I wish the whole front of the church was a mirror. People see them picking the nose. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. You know, some folk go out on Sunday night into a restaurant after church. It scares me sometimes to go out with apostolics after church. I don't know what they're going to say they seen while church was going on. I don't know what they're going to say they did while church was going on. But I know the whole place is full of sinners and it really worries me about what maybe they're going to say next. Sinners say, what do I go down that church for if all they do is sit there and talk and pick their nose and So don't sound like they got much down there to me. What'd you see while you was here? What'd you hear while the preacher was preaching? Well, he said, well, he said something about what I heard or seen. Man, he don't want to know what I've heard and seen. It'd probably embarrass him if I told him what I heard and seen. Just walking down there on the low road. What does it sound like? Ah, oh, it sound like a bunch of noise. Sound like rumble, like thunder. Hallelujah. Verse 6, second chapter, they was confounded. Verse 7, they was amazed and marveled. Verse 12, 
The doubters was there. Verse 13, the mockers were there. I'm going to tell some of you teenage kids in this church something. You're borderline on going to hell, mocking people in this church the way they're worshiping. You better get off of it. You're damning your soul by the way you're acting. It's passed up sacrilegious. It's got clear over on the danger side. I'd be scared to do what I've seen and heard some folks do in the last year or two. There's some folks that don't mind God cursing them. But I want to tell you, I don't want God to curse me. I don't intend to walk in carnality. I love you people, but I don't intend to be so close to you that I'm as carnal as a pig pen. Amen. I'm going to stay on that high road. Hallelujah. I, I got to hear. I can't hear thunder. I can't hear rumbling. When God's speaking, it's got to sound better than angels. It's got to sound like God. It's got to sound like God is talking to my soul. God is leading me. God is speaking to me. God is putting joy bells in my soul. I love it when I go out out of church on Sunday night somewhere and I see somebody walk in a restaurant and shake an old sinner's hand and say, hey, should have been in church with us tonight. Oh yeah? What do you got down there? Hey, you should have seen this old drunk pray through tonight. Come up out of that altar speaking in other tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. Walked out and he's through. <laughs> you ain't never seen a guy so happy in all your life. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, you should have seen <laughs> how God healed this old sister. <laughs> they said she's going to have to have an operation. <laughs> but she came to church <laughs> and we prayed for her. <laughs> and she's healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. God made her whole. Praise God. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, I ain't hearing just thunder. I ain't hearing just rumbling. But I'm hearing the voice of Almighty God. Uh, I'm hearing the Spirit uh, move in the church. Uh. What do you see since you've been to church tonight? What have you heard while the choir was singing? What did you hear while the choir was singing? What did you see? Some of you didn't do nothing because all you seen was Carmen. And I can't stand Carmen. I didn't see Carmen. I've seen Brother Nathan Carricker. And it looked to me like the Holy Ghost was on him. And it looked like when he said, I've been delivered, he felt it. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Praise God! Yeah. I'm in an apostolic, one God, tongue-talking, holy roller, born again, heaven-bound, believing church. When I get here, I'm not going to expect just, well, old sister. Praise God. Probably old sister so and so hears something besides thunder. She probably hears joy bells. You know what I like about this church? You get somebody like Sister Martha. Ain't got enough money to buy two bags of peanuts at the same time. I love her. She'll go out there and put her hand on that piece of junk she drives. The only difference between hers and mine is hers a cheap piece of junk and mine's an expensive one.
Praise God. She'll turn around and look at me and say, You know, Brother Elder, I just anointed it and prayed for it. It's gone another month. <laughs> you know what? She don't see a messed up carburetor. She don't see two bald or four bald cars. A hood that's liable to pop up at any second. Hallelujah. She just knows that God has been my help and God has been my strength and God is taking me through and she just puts her hands on all of the old hood and just keeps leaning on his everlasting arm. I'm saying, what do you see? What do you hear? Do you see a burnout carburetor? Do you see bald tires? There's some folks that don't walk down here. Some folks, they get way up here and they walk in the spirit and they see what God's doing in the church and they see the angels uh, and they hear from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do you see? And what do you hear? You need to get yourself out of the mully grubs. Get in the spirit. Some of you people are having trouble with your kids because you don't walk in the spirit. They're doing evil, ungodly things in the church and you don't even think it's bad. So here I am, the head cop. I don't tell you one thing, I'm going to walk. I'm going to hear angels. Praise God. Hello. And when them angels speak, I'm going to hear the certain tone and the certain voice. I tell you, it would be wonderful if some of us would get on our knees this week and say, Oh God, give me spiritual eyes that I might see and know God that you're going to deliver me. And know God that you're my strength and my joy. Hallelujah. I don't have to walk down here and see all this carrying on. But I can walk in a spiritual world. Hello? How many of you want to get in the place? Where the angels of God are talking to you. You don't hear just rumbling. You don't just see. I see old brother so and so sinning. I wonder why you don't see old brother so and so soul in hell. And instead of standing around in the church talking about old so and so, you're laid out in an altar praying God deliver so and so from this demon's hell. Hello. Hello. I tell you, we got more power than witches has got. Ain't no doubt in my mind about it. Eight chapter of Acts that had a witch in there. Amen. He he bewitched the people, the Bible said. Pull all his sorceries and stuff on them people. Amen. But oh, but old Philip come in there, praise God, having, having the Holy Ghost all over him. Didn't even know better. Praise God, just putting his hands on people, getting the Holy Ghost, casting devils out of them, people getting healed. What do you see? I see God. What do you hear? I hear God. What do you see? I see angels working with me. What do you hear? Hey, I don't know whether you know or not, but your, past, your pastor has been praying this week, God, you put angels in this house. God, put angels in this house. God, start ministering to these people. God, when they come in this church, you start talking to these people. Let them know sin is sin. Let them know wrong is wrong. 
minister in this house. Hallelujah! Praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful God. What do you see? What do you hear? Come on, Sister Elder. No proud, no profound sermon tonight. Are you mad? Did you sit in the house of God tonight and get mad? Huh? Huh? Are you upset? Praise God. Come on, what do you see? I wonder how many of you parents believe God can help you raise them kids. You believe God can help you raise them kids? Huh? And you ought to raise your hands and say, Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm walking down the King's Highway. I'm walking down the high road. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got the devil trying to pull me down now, but he ain't pulling me down. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know what you hear. I know some of you see and hear wonderful things, and some of you ain't seen or heard nothing since you come to church. We're walking out of here and telling somebody about. Oh, God, what would you see since you come to church? Uh, what have you heard? Have you seen these empty pews filled up with sinners? Have you seen a choir singing and people getting healed? Hallelujah. Have you seen the choir singing and people running to the altar and getting saved? Uh, have you seen people running and repenting of their sins and getting baptized in Jesus' name since you come to church? What did you see? What did you hear? By faith on hand, by Beyond the hashad of a hakata son of a hashad. Oh, glory! Hallelujah! Plant my feet on higher ground. I'm going to ask you something else before we walk out of here. What do you see for you this week? Do you see troubles this week that you can't get through? Do you see things this week that you don't know how you're going to stand up to it and all that stuff? Or do you see after you walk out of this church tonight a God that's so big that it don't make no difference what the world throws at you? It ain't big enough. It don't make no difference what the devil throws at you. It ain't big enough. Your God's bigger than anything the world can throw. Your God's bigger than anything the devil can bring to you. What do you see? What do you hear? I come to church tonight oh, because of the King of Kings to praise Him. Oh, there's nobody like Him. There's nothing can touch Him. He love a hot He love a hot Hallelujah. God. Oh God. Lord, my oh God. Lord, Lord God, get us off of the low road. God, get us on the high road. 
God, get our eyes off the carnal things and things of this world and get our eyes, God, on heavenly things and things above so we can hear your voice and it's a clear sound. And I have Hallelujah, Hallelujah, 